Hello, and welcome to the R4D Season 2 Episode 1 Recap. We're happy to have you on board. My name's Ryan, and I'm one of the players in John Harrison's tabletop role-playing game. We use a home-brewed system of John's making. It's a 2D10 system that allows for much more variety and playstyle than most other game systems. Recipes for Disaster, or R4D, is the universe that John has created for us to play around in. We've had two seasons. This second season sees a new roster of, char of characters leaving their mark on Earth in a modern urban fantasy. Most of our player characters find themselves in Atlanta, Georgia, the week of the 4th of July. Firstly, we're introduced to Bill Sender, Rafa's character, who's a suited accountant, who's just gotten out of a weird, bad trip and he vows never to touch the needle again. He's been doing pretty good, but has been having nightmares as of late. His company assigns him a therapist. In the time jump, we find out that he's actually been doing pretty good, but he's been having a few nightmares as of late. His company assigns him a therapist, who recommends that instead of Bill using alcohol as his normal substitute to drugs, that he finds something more fun or entertaining. And she suggests either the carnival or preacher that have both recently come into town. Bill thinks the carnival would probably be the best bet for him. Jack Walker, Trevor's character, is a blind Irish carnival fighter who just got hired at a carnival in, in Atlanta. His boss recommends that Jack limit his daily drinking from two pints every hour to one pint every two hours. Jack counters with if the boss would like people to live and be safe, he'd probably want to have him stick to his normal reg regimen rather than the new one. Although Jack doesn't necessarily disagree with what the boss, or say, says no to what the boss's request was, he does say that it's going to be a tough time for the boss to be able to keep him on that regimen. The boss also informs Jack that he's going to be assigning him a guide around the carnival. Jack then leaves the boss's tent to go explore. Barnabas Lee, Quasi's traveling preacher character, and Jonah Schmidt, excuse me, Barnabas's hot-headed semi-truck driver, played by Mia, have just arrived in Atlanta with Barnabas's second employee, his bus driver Bob. They're all getting ready to set up the tent revival with some employees of a local store. Dustin Von Stratton, a felonoid, which is a cat-like humanoid, played by George, suddenly finds himself in Yosemite National Park in California. Luckily, he's in the forest, because he's surrounded by some strange humans who probably wouldn't take too kindly to a cat person. Dustin knows he's there to seek his contact, and so sneaks around in the forest, searching. His contact, another felonoid, ends up finding Dustin instead, and informs him of his mission here on Earth. Marcel, a member of Dustin's town on another planet, has apparently created a whole new race of felonoids, and Dustin's there to seek out a new baby from that felonoid race. The one who has the most information on his target is a Berinthian woman, and she's in Atlanta. Despite Dustin's unfamiliarity with the humans of this planet, the contact points to a human charter bus as his mode of transportation to get from California to Atlanta. Amaya Blackstone, a Berinthian woman, played by Christine, is walking down a sidewalk in Atlanta when she senses a presence following her the same presence she's felt over the past few days. She acts quickly, ducking into an alley and getting into a high perch. A well-suited man quickly comes into the alley, briefly searches for her, then contacts someone using a strange device, a Calinthian communicator. He informs him that he's lost Amaya, and then he continues down the street. Finding some renewed vigor as to her mission to seek out traces of the Calinthian Empire, who's previously eluded her investigation. Amaya gets down from her perch and chooses 
what she deems to be the best place to find some members of that evil coalition. The freak show at the carnival that just arrived here in Atlanta. Bill Sender finds himself at the carnival, and curious as to what he'd like to see first, he finds a poster about the freak show that there, that's there at the carnival. Of the various options for the show, two piques his interest. The blind fighter and the freak of nature. He decides he'd like to see the freak, but on his way to the exhibit, he literally runs into the guide, who's helping Jack Walker out. The guide almost falls, but Jack quickly catches him. Jack and Bill start talking, and even though Jack informs Bill that he's blind, Bill has a tough time believing it, considering he just caught a falling man. Bill accompanies Jack back to his tent, and the two are there with the guide for some time, discussing the fight that he's going to be performing later, and how to best start setting that up. The guide offers to spread word about the fight, and to provide those who are interested with waivers, which remove any liability of death or injury from the carnival itself. And Bill offers to help Jack out by following him around and questioning him about his blindness. It seems to Bill that there's something familiar about Jack. Also, Dustin arrives in Atlanta, and surprisingly, it was an uneventful ride for a cat person in a bus filled with humans. He was able to keep from getting unwanted attention, hiding under his hood and keeping to himself while reading a book the whole way. As he gets off the bus, he's able to track down the carnival in town. And he heads there as he realizes that's the best place to hide animal people. Amaya arrives at the carnival at the same time as Dustin, and notices him because, funnily enough, he's trying not to be noticed. She realizes that the best way to find a Corinthian is that they'll hide in plain sight. She does her best to not be noticed by him, seeing as they're both heading in the same direction into the carnival simultaneously. They both head toward the freak show. Jonah finishes setting up the tent and other equipment the preacher needs, while Barnabas is walking around searching for youth to hand out flyers for his tent revival. One of the employees of the store that were helping us set up says that we ought to go to the carnival to spread word around about the tent revival here in town. Because there's likely to be a big crowd there, naturally. They both think it'd be a great idea and head there. While Bob stays behind keeping an eye on the tent. Dustin and Amaya see this loud obnoxious guy running around the carnival with a stack of papers, saying that they're waivers for the fight against the blind man. He nearly runs into them, but Dustin catches him before it happens. And the still hiding Amaya happens to see the hand Dustin caught the guide with is covered with yellow and black fur. Amaya grabs one of the waivers without being seen, and the bumbling guide coerces Dustin to accompany him. He leads Dustin with a stocking of Maya to the table that he set up for the fight with a handmade banner and advertising the brawl. Sorry, handmade and banner advertising the brawl. He then goes to inform Jack that he's ta- that the table is ready, and then seeks out a cash box. Jonah and Barnabas walk into the carnival, seeing this guide running around, flailing his arms and yelling for a cash box. Seems he's running from the freak show area. Barnabas and Jonah decide to head in that direction too because there seems to be a large crowd gathering there. Also to see why this guide running around with his hands failing was so excited. Jack, meanwhile, comes out to his tent, sorry, comes out of his tent, accompanied by Bill, and sends up, sets up a barrel with a slit on top and a handmade note saying $15 on it. Bill asks Dustin if he's part of the freak show as well, to which Dustin responds with a quick, firm no. Jonah Bar- Joan and Barnabas approach within the crowd, though they're still unsure about what's going on. Carnies start vying for the crowd's attention and people start splitting off. 
a soft-spoken woman that looks like a cat starts advertising Jack's show. But Barnabas and Jonah can't really hear her. They then ask her again what the show is about. And she speaks up, saying that it's a fight. Jonah gets overly excited, pushing his way through the crowd, eager to sign up for the fight. The loud, obnoxious guide starts following Jonah in the hole that he makes, makes through the crowd, but to no avail. Barnabas convinces people to move aside for the guide, informing them that the bumbling idiot has a job to do. Jonah grabs three waivers and enters in $45 to fight three fights. Amaya starts studying the blind man. She already having signed up. So with fighters lined up and the group together, although completely unfamiliar with each other, we end the episode on an interesting and slightly exciting note.